Now developing news involving the Baylor scandal and our OTL conversation with the school's former Title IX supervisor. The whistleblower who says she was forced out of the university in the wake of that massive athlete sexual assault scandal that left the school in upheaval. Patty Crawford spoke at length today with Outside the Lines' Paula Levine. So Baylor would never let me release the reporting numbers because they were so high. And they are complex. They're not all sexual assaults or rape cases. So July of uh, 2014 till I resigned and that was over 400 total reports during that. So basically, um, you know, uh, a little over two years. More than 400 in two years. More than 400. Much more of today's interview in a moment, but first, some important context. It was 11 months ago that Paula Levine first reported exclusively the pattern of widespread alleged and proven sexual assaults by Baylor athletes. Assault survivors speaking on camera telling OTL explicitly how their outcries to school officials were met systematically by a wall of indifference. This from January. I didn't hear from the coach. I didn't hear from the president. I didn't hear from the athletic director. And what was your subject line? I was raped at Baylor. In April, Outside the Lines reporting continued with the account of an alleged gang rape by two Baylor football players, including a print interview with the survivor. In May, even as the Baylor Board of Regents was reviewing the outside investigative report on the school's reported indifference to sexual assault victims, OTL revealing three new allegations. Several internal sources telling OTL that our reporting sparked the Baylor Regents to act, forcing out coach Art Bryles. And Athletic Director Ian McCaw. Several weeks ago, Outside the Lines reported that the number of Baylor athletes accused of sexual assault since 2009 now totaled at least 17 persons. Art Bryles, who led Baylor football from mediocrity to national prominence in his first interview since his firing, telling Outside the Lines in September that he accepted general responsibility for what happened on his watch. I made mistakes. I did wrong. Uh, but I'm not doing this, you know, trying to to, to make myself, you know, feel better for apologizing. I understand I made some mistakes. There were some bad things that happened under my watch. I was the captain of the ship. The captain of the ship goes down with it. You know, so I understand that I've made some mistakes. And for that, I'm sorry. In his only television interview, former Baylor University President Ken Starr telling Outside the Lines in June that on this issue, he lived behind a veil of ignorance. I did not hear Coach Art Bryles' explanation for whatever the facts were or the findings were as put before him. So I'm behind the veil of ignorance. All of which brings us back to Patty Crawford, who officially resigned as Baylor's Title IX coordinator, but who later said she had been forced out. In January, Crawford gave Paula Levine the Baylor party line. Because we do want to be our best, and we're always wanting to be an improvement from yesterday. And to me, that just demonstrates that Baylor really does care. That was then. Now, what you're about to hear is what she is saying today. You will notice a gentleman seated next to Patty Crawford as we watch this interview. It's Rogie Dunn, Crawford's attorney, who not only insisted on being seated next to his client, but made his continual presence on camera a condition for the interview. Now, Paula Levine with Patty Crawford. When you were hired in 2014, and when you came aboard, what idea or what concept did you have about what the problem was at Baylor involving sexual assaults? It was an interesting story about connections of students with board members and then the parents complaining to their friends who are board members saying campus isn't safe on a different level, nothing to do with sexual violence. And then they had a firm come in and do an assessment, Margolis Healy, and then that firm said, you don't have a Title IX coordinator. Right. But don't say, yeah. maybe cut that off between the term Margulies, because that's a law firm, right? Um, they're a consulting firm, they're not a law firm. You're sure. Yeah, okay. it's, a, it's a campus safety consulting firm. All right. So administrators were expressing shock when you told them that students were having sex, period, drinking alcohol, having non-consensual sex. The Board of Regents members have said that they were just absolutely floored by what they were hearing happen, that they didn't think this happened at Baylor. Do you think they're telling the truth when they say that? There's no way um, that they wouldn't have known these things happen. I mean, sexual violence has happened since the beginning of 
humanity. <laughs> and Baylor has existed longer than the existence of the state of Texas. So I can't imagine why they would think Baylor would be immune to violence. It's in every community that exists and you can't ignore it because you don't want to deal with the liability of it and also say you don't want it happening. And, and that was what Baylor was saying to me in the end. We don't want this to happen, but the harder you work, the worse it gets for us. And you know, this issue, all this crisis stuff with Baylor is your fault, Patty, because if you wouldn't have been working so hard, this wouldn't exist, these problems wouldn't exist. And that was the point for me in July when Reagan Ramsauer said that to me. I realized they, they do know what they're saying and they do know these things exist and I'm the next person that they want to put out as uh, maybe a scapegoat to protect them. What happened after the Sam Ukuwachu conviction? So there were things in the first nine months that I noticed that were very concerning to me. Um, you know, the first two months I was there, I learned of gang rape allegations from 2012 and dating violence from 2013 that were very concerning to me. I went directly to my boss that day and said there could be cultural issues. I need to investigate. He said, yes, go ahead. And they called me into this emergency meeting on February 4th. Reagan and the athletic director, my boss at the time, Juan Alejandro, and Chris Holmes, the lawyer, and basically wanted me to tell them what was going on. I said, this is what I need to do. I need to investigate this. And the athletic department, the athletic director asked if I could give immunity to the football players that still were at the university. And I, I looked around the room and everyone had their heads down. And I said, no. What do you think was motivating him to ask if you could give those players immunity? There's a lot of assumptions that uh, I made about that. I was never given direct answers about why that statement was made. Um, I think it was clear that they didn't like the fact that this information had come to my attention so quickly in my tenure at the university. So they only asked me about football players or athletes over the last five years. They didn't care about all the other cases, which concerned me. They were very quiet and uh, they acted shocked, but they didn't say anything until they started making comments about, well, what Patty's saying aren't facts. These women, these are allegations, these are accusations, they're real no, f and I said, listen, I investigate every report I get to the extent that I can, and their credibility is not in question here. And I remember going home that night and telling my husband, I don't know if I can be at Baylor very long because I'm not sure if they have the right intentions with why they hired me and why they have my job. Paula Levine with Patty Crawford. I'll be speaking with Paula in a moment, but first, the latest from the new interim president of Baylor University, David Garland, who today is promising more of what he calls transparency going forward. Quote, we came to understand that in order to heal, the Baylor family needs more information about what happened and why. It has become obvious that all needed and deserve more information. This after nearly a year of reporting in the information in the national media, as well as that scathing Pepper Hamelin report. Dr. Garland also says this, no other university faced with similar circumstances has moved as decisively to change leadership at the highest levels. The president, athletic director, and head football coach. But what is unclear is that any university has ever been faced with such a crisis. Years of indifference to sexual assault tied by popular belief to the meteoric rise of the college football program. Let's now get back to Paula in Dallas after her time with Patty Crawford. What were the roadblocks that she described by her account placed in her way by Baylor to do her job? She talks about several roadblocks. She says that she didn't have access to police reports, that it was very difficult to get information from the Waco or Baylor police. She talks about having to go to the highest levels of the university to get permission to talk to a student athlete, and that delayed an interview she had with a student athlete for three weeks. She talks about people um, inserting layers of management above her to sort of diminish her role as Title IX coordinator and, and just sort of gives a general um, feeling that she just that that they were telling her one thing but that their actions were telling her another. We have a statement just issued. Uh, the university has hired a public relations firm and they're doing their job. They got the statement out according to Reagan Ramsauer. He is discussing, he's a senior administrator said to be and, and very much in the middle of many of the accounts. You're a very powerful person at the university. Discussing Patty Crawford, the gloves have come off. Uh, here's the quote. It became evident to her colleagues that the job requirements of running a Title IX office 
far surpassed her management skills. As the emails and documents we posted on the Baylor website clearly show, we made every effort to support Patty, including providing her extensive management training, additional staff, and a 250% increase in her budget. In addition, there were some other HR issues that I can't and won't go into, end quote. The ultimate hanging Chad or undropped shoe. What does she say about this gentleman? <laughs> Well, Bob, you were right. I mean, it, the gloves have come off. And last night that, you know, Baylor started posting that information, those, in, you know, snippets from emails and so forth. And, and to, to sort of address that, they mentioned uh, three Title IX investigators who they say resigned because of management issues with Patty Crawford. Well, Patty Crawford then counters today, you know, when we met with her today in Dallas with her attorney, she counters with this huge stack of documents, says she has an affidavit from one of those investigators saying that no, it wasn't it wasn't because of her. It was because of Baylor administrators. She contends that another one of them was fired from the university because she violated Title IX policy. Baylor counters back to that, saying no, she resigned. I mean, it is it's a complete well, back and what forth. What does she and, say and about Ramsar? I mean, we're short on oh. time, and her on Ramsar. Yeah, I mean, she says, I mean, she she just says what he's saying is false. I mean, to go back to the whole immunity conversation. She says, you know, that, I mean, he says, I'm sorry. He says that uh, that, that never happened, that it was, they talked about one football player that they wanted to grant immunity to. And Patty, you know, comes back and says, no, he's wrong. There are people there who will back me up. And that's pretty much yeah. how it goes between the two of them. I mean, she just continues to say he's lying. They're saying she's lying. It's, it is, as with it, it, sexual very, assaults very in general, he said, yeah. she said. Was, uh, in a sentence, was her, was her account that Ramsauer said put nothing in writing? That's her account. That's now, her account. Baylor's That's her account and Ramsauer's account, is that is not yeah. true. Well, the statements are that all online. Baylor has a writing. website. The statement is available. That's the beauty of the digital Internet. You can read it and draw your own conclusions. Paula Levine, you don't need me to tell you. Great reporting. Thank you very much. And for even more context and analysis. Mark Schlebaugh also reporting in very diligently on this throughout the last several months. His new report is online.